Big water typically means big walleyes, and we're up near Escanaba fishing Big Bay to Knock area, and I brought two of my good buddies, Corey Sprengel and Derek Navis. These guys have a pretty phenomenal track record up here. Almost every tournament that you can have, they've won up here. So this is a two-fold show. What I'm actually gonna do is get myself some personal waypoints, see how they like to troll spinners on this structure, but more so, hopefully show you a lot of big walleyes. So follow us, and we're gonna show you the, the next bite. Professional walleye tournament circuits are the proving grounds for not only techniques, but also the naked details behind presentation and areas to fish. Got one. You got one? Yep. In today's world of social media and competition coverage, it is next to impossible to hide from the public or other anglers what you are doing differently that is resulting in a winning bite. I'll get the board. Sprangle, you just keep driving the boat. Oh, I got this. <laughs> Derek and I will take care of this oh. fish. <laughs> He's got it buried. Yeah, he did. He sank it. <laughs> However, it's sharing this keen insight that often leads to new and successful innovations that make everyone's fishing more enjoyable as the industry responds to what the very best anglers are doing consistently to stay on top in the competition world. The old flicker rig blade. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> That's a nice bait and knock fish right there. Lake Michigan's Big Bay de Noc is often chosen as a stage for many walleye tournaments. However, the structure that Chase, Corey, and Derek are targeting is what sets this particular spinning bite far apart from an open water trolling bite. Oh yeah, oh, man. what a dandy. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's a good fish. Beautiful bay de Noc walleye. I mean, it was pretty crazy because you just don't mark a ton of fish not, up not here. Often. And <laughs> I think we got one of them. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Beautiful walleye. Fishing Big Bay to Knock is very similar to fishing Little Bay. You know, it's on a lot bigger scale. Early in the year, the fish migrate up to the shallow bays of spawn, but as summer progresses and that water warms up, these fish migrate out towards deeper water, more towards Big Bay Shoal, Round Island, even out in the Green Bay on the shoals, Minneapolis and Driscoll. So we're in August now in the warmest part of the year. What I like to look for is, you know, those shallow shoals, the ones that top out of that 20 plus feet. And what those spots are great for is it doesn't take a lot of wind here on the Great Lakes to create big waves. When you have big waves you have a lot of current and those currents set up those fish on key spots on those structures where you can come across and basically that current will bring the bait fish right to them these big fish don't like to do a lot to feed if the food can come to them very easily that's right where they're going to be sitting so if you do a little bit of your homework on your Lorance electronics before you get there put a lot more fish in your boat a lot faster oh there's one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Here, good one too one for you Oh, this one's got some weight to it, too. <laughs> it looks exactly like what you want. Yeah. You got the board for him, Corey, or you want me to grab it? I can get it. All right. You got a little time yet. He's coming in. Give me a little break. He's coming in pretty slow. A little wind kicking. I'm excited enough I'm going to hold the net for Corey for a while. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, oh, yeah, here he comes. Yep. Thanks. Uh, he is straight down yeah, into the is. boat, huh? We're just coming off the edge of yeah, the shoal right, right off here. the back yep. side. Oh, yep. wow. Oh, he's fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. That is. Yeah, yeah boy. Oh, oh. Wow. Look at Sweet. that thing. How oh, dark these fish are. Yeah, they are beautiful. Oh. I got to watch you guys catch that one, so I'll, I'll take them off. There you ooh, go. Ooh. Need a pliers? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to stick go. my hand all the way down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't going to have to worry about losing that one. No. Look at how dark that <laughs> fish is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
healthy nice fish. Dark, rusty color. Healthy. <laughs> just buried it too. Pinched I mean, we looked up. It. You know, it was that board was just yeah. pinned straight vertical. So, <laughs> all right. Woo! <laughs> nice. I like fishing with you guys. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Trolling these spinners on structure like we are in Big Bay to Knock is so much different than open water fishing with spinners. When we're open water fishing, we're looking for big pods of fish. A lot of those fish are suspended. But what we have here is a situation where we're focusing in on very irregular structure and you'll actually see it this is big bay shoal and you can easily see the outline of the shoal it's a huge area but when you zoom in you can see all these different little specific rock humps inside that shoal that are so important to make sure that you're fishing around or near those fish like to sit off the edges of those humps so make sure you're trolling your spinners very close to that and you can change that speed to get those things up over those humps sometimes you may even want to go right over the top of them but the interesting thing thing that we've always seen up in this area is you don't seem to mark a ton of fish. The water's so clear, these fish are spooking away from the boat a little bit. But the bonus is when they spook away from the boat, they tend to go out to your planer boards. So you're not marking a lot of fish, but that mapping is just the most important thing that you can really focus in on, on these structure areas to make sure you're hitting the key spots that a ton of fish are gonna hold on. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. Simplifying your trolling setup is always extremely helpful, especially on big water where the wind plays such a large factor in staying on the structure. Plainly speaking, keeping things simple gets you fishing faster. Besides, you wouldn't want all that time that otherwise would have been spent retying spinner setups or getting back on the spot to cut into that special time spent in camaraderie. Do you know how to fight these things, Corey? Uh, I've done it a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> With your Berkeley Pro team teammates, right? Chase's got one board out and Derek's got three. You're just standing there. I also put the bow mount down. A little team camaraderie right here for you guys. We'll show you how it's done, Chase. Okay. All right. I'll show you how to do it. I'm watching. <laughs> you got, we, we, we taught you how to put would the you crawler just, on. Would you? <laughs> now we're going to show you how to take the board off and yeah. put one in the net, all right? How about you just reel this thing in? Gonna need to buy more air time though, for how slow you're bringing this in. <laughs> At the very least, it's always a good thing when you can spend more time picking on your friends without losing time picking apart areas to fish. This is a nice fish, Chase. That's a nice one? Yeah. He's dogging him this pretty good This is a nice now. one, he says. Oh yeah, I can see him already. Oh yeah, it's a giant. You can oh, see yeah. these things oh. forever down there, too. I hate it when you're fishing tournaments, man. It gets you nervous when you can see them in a fight. Go on. Oh yeah. Oh, he's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. There, we go. there it is. There he comes. Oh. <laughs> uh, nice fish, man. Nice That's one. a good fish, Corey. That is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that thing sure did not want to come in. It made yeah. several runs on you. It was, yep. it was right on bottom, and it took me a little bit to get them up. You going to need a player's? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Got it? <laughs> That's an oh, awesome oh, fish. There we go. That's a good fish. Yeah. Nice. Dandy. Man, did that thing fight though? Yeah, I mean, just straight down. It really no? did. <laughs> Fishing up here in Bay to Knock, one of my favorite things I typically like to do is pull a lot of crawler harnesses. The Berkeley Flicker Rig is actually one of my favorite ones I like to pull. It's a good quality harness that comes right in the package, ready to go. They actually come with a double wide octopus hook. The double wide is a really nice hook for catching big fish. They're very strong. You can go through many, many fish with them. They stay super sharp after going through a lot of fish. They come pre-tied with six beads on them, which is perfect for the Colorado blades. They, they put on them ready to go. They tie them up with a four foot, 
100% trilene fluorocarbon leader. The nice thing about the 100% fluorocarbon leader is, is one, for catching the big fish up here, but also for when you're pulling around the reefs every now and then, we do drag bottom and nick bottom a little bit. The line can go through a lot of abuse and you can still catch a lot of big fish with them. One of my favorite ones I actually have in my hand right now is the golden purple, which the purple up here and your darker colored blades kind of imitate the gobies, which is one of their main sources that they feed on. And then also the perch one, fish up here really like to gorge on some of these perch. And then the red and the gold one actually is also one of my personal favorites all over up here. It's nice when you go to different bodies of water, try to match the hatch. You can actually grab these rigs right out of the package or with that interchangeable clevis, you can actually change them right out to go with the different color beads if it's something that you kind of like a little better than another. So them are a couple of things I, I like to do when I come up to bait a knock and fish. Real fishing information from real fishing experts presented by Amsoil. You know, if you ever see me out on the water or see pictures of me, you'll notice I always have on sunglasses. Now, sunglasses are really, really important for fishing. You know, no matter what kind of fishing you're doing, whether you're pitching a jig or you're shivering or you're watching boards, being able to see out in sunlight is real important, and especially on the water, because you get that double reflection. And a lot of people talk about sunglasses, you know, how important it is to, like, see in the water, maybe seeing bait in the water or actually maybe even seeing fish in the water, being able to see mud lines on the water. That's all really, really important, but for me one of the most important things is reducing eye strain. Uh, it's been quite a few years ago where I had a laser surgery on my eyes and they quite frankly just cannot tolerate any kind of brightness. Even completely cloudy days give me eye strain. I start squinting, I get a headache, and it's real bothersome, especially with the long days that I spend on the water. And the interesting thing about the sunglasses I wear now, these S11s, they've got 11 different layers doing all kinds of different things. You know, you can go online and read about them, but they actually do a great job of letting me see in the water, but also reducing that eye strain. Now, one of the things about me is, is I'm not the uh, easiest on sunglasses. You know, I'll throw them in a pocket in a rain suit, and then later on sit on the rain suit and smash my glasses, or I'll set them on the dash and blow them out. So I go through a fair number of pairs of sunglasses a year. So what I like to look for is an affordable pair of sunglasses that still give me all that performance, keep me on the water fishing, reduce that eye strain, and just make an enjoyable day out on the water, sunny, cloudy, or whatever. A bit like the right species. Yeah, this one feels good. Chase Parsons, Derek Navis, and Corey Sprangle are having to balance boat control with speed control. Matt, all right. Yep. Here you go. All right, perfect. Derek, you want to tap that power pole yep. up? Man, this thing stains straight down, Corey. In order to pull spinners along and over pinpoint aspects of huge structure, such as small rock humps on large shoals, to stay on top of this upper peninsula of Michigan late summer walleye bite. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Another one of those uh, maybe that's, slot fish, that's, huh? That's probably a perfect slot right there. Really nice starting to see more of them slot fish show up. You know, years ago it was all big ones that everybody got here. Now we're yeah. starting to see more of them. In the yeah. same area too. Mixed that's up. a cool thing. Another nice fish. I mean, this is probably, you know, one of those slot fish, those under 23 inches that you were always looking for in a tournament. That one actually looks like about a 22 inch right there, Corey. 22 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with spinner fishing, speed is so key in order to catch a lot of fish. Now, we want to be going typically in that one to maybe 1.3 mile an hour range. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is really pay attention to the wind direction and set upwind to make it easy for you to hit the edge of one of these shallow humps or just stay on one of those sharp breaks as well as you can because you're not going to be doing a lot of turning. But obviously with this wind, we're going to be drifting too fast, even if we're using the bow mount and pushing backwards. And that's the case today. We have a wind that's not crazy, so we're not really flying. But but what we've actually done is put the kicker down on one side and we're using the power pole on the other side 
and putting it down. It's giving us a little bit more drag, equaling it out on both sides of the back of the boat, so we're still able to maintain that straight drift with these waves, but it's slowing us right down into that key speed. Now, of course, if the wind gets really roaring, you can actually put that drift paddle attachment on the power pole to slow you down even more. So what basically what we've done is it's allowing us to go the right speeds, hit the structure that we want to hit, and catch a lot of fish on Big Bay to Knock. Oh, there's one. Oh, that thing's buried. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. Really good one. I can't hardly gain on him. He's pulling so hard. Derek, don't mess this one up. All right. He hammered it. Yeah, he did. It drilled it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's good weight Oh, there. yeah, it's straight down. <laughs> See if we can get this one in the net for you, man. Straight down. Yeah, staying down. Oh, he's coming in easy now. Get him, Chase. Got oh, him. there we go. Dude, yeah, it's a nice, good spot for him to get up. Nice net job. <laughs> what a beauty. It's a long fish there. That is that a long is. fish. Dandy. Beauty. <laughs> Nice. That, one, that one was crazy because yeah, I was. think it actually almost had all three of us fooled. Yeah, we thought it was bottom yep. at first because it went so he hard back. He hammered it hard, really hard. <laughs> that one was not bottom. No, he definitely <laughs> hammered it. When it comes to pulling crawler harnesses, there's a lot of different weight options available. There's the inline weight, there's snap weights, there's even bottom bouncers. What I like to use is the inline weight and the lightest weights possible when I'm trolling spinners. Because when it comes to trolling structure like we're out here doing today, you know, humps, points, and different shoals, I like to have a light weight where when I come up to a piece of structure and that bottom's coming up, I can simply speed the boat up a few tenths of a mile an hour to easily raise those spinners up over top of the bottom because or out here today, you cannot touch bottom between the moss and the gobies and the other debris that's down there. So those lighter weights allow those spinners just to coast down on the bottom very easily so I can control them. They look very natural, just like a bait fish would come down instead of plunging down. And also, those lighter weights work very good for in, in rough conditions when bolt control isn't as easy. Well, that lighter weight is going to be more forgiving, going to keep those spinners off the bottom. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustad, stay sharper, longer. Lowrance, fine, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. One of the most asked questions that I get as I travel across the country is, what are those things sticking up off the back of your boat? And you know, it's a legitimate question. Five years ago, you hardly ever saw them in the northern part of the United States. Only some of the bass boats had them. They're shallow water anchors from power pole, and they're actually used for boat control. They actually have a cam action arm that goes down and spikes right into the bottom. A lot of the deep V boats will have a power pole on one side and a kicker on the other so that they control, but yet they can jig in the spring in the fall. I've actually got this boat set up with two of them. It has double the holding power, so if I'm in a situation where I want to jig fish, a real Really good point but the winds pounding into it I can spike both of these down and they're gonna hold me in place so I can concentrate on jig fishing and not so much on boat control one of the cool things about these is you can put paddles on them and they can actually work like a drift sock and slow down your drift if you put them only part way down or they can slow your boat down when you're trolling they also stop surging in big waves when you're trying to troll like spinners and crankbaits so you're looking at a tool that's gonna really help you catch a lot more fish whether you're jig fishing like I am today or whether you're trolling in the middle of summer and catching big hog walleyes on the Great Lakes. By being able to manipulate the running depths of their spinners by using lighter weights, 
Chase, Corey, and Derek have been able to more easily cover the various types of substructures off of major shoals of Big Bay to knock in search of tournament winning walleyes, focusing not only on size, healthy, fish. nice, dark, rusty color, healthy. but also consistency in numbers. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's a good fish. Beautiful Bay to knock walleye. Utilizing the details found on their contour mapping screens over sonar in this scenario has been key as has been using a combination of their bow mount and transom mounted gear to maintain position and speed in the ever-changing wind and waves. Looking like there's a little bit of wave there. Feels pretty good, boys. Feels it's got pretty that good. board tip back pretty good. Oh yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. <laughs> I'll get the net. All right. Net? Yeah. We'll take the net on this one, boys. Doesn't want to come up, no. does it? It's a pretty good one. Yeah, that, that is. is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was bigger than what I thought it right. even was. Look at that. Look at that on that thing. Wow. 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 Holy cow. Oh, just barely oh, at him. Yeah. Right in the yeah. corner in the last hook. Right in the corner. <laughs> All right, Ooh, maybe it wasn't getting off. Yeah, it wasn't getting Here's off. That one hook's yeah, in there good. Oh, oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh, That's a stud. I tell you. Good length, healthy. Look at the head on that thing. I can see why you guys like pulling harnesses yeah. out here. <laughs> it's so fun when you get one of those big ones on. I mean, there was good weight the whole time, but right until the end, he didn't do a lot no, of fighting. But no. we could see him down there. This water is clear enough. You can see this yeah. big girl sitting down there. And well, that's a nice that's fish a right there. Nice it's a good place for it to go when it gets in the net. <laughs> 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 All right, bait and knock giant right there. there. We go. You feel like Angelina Jolie yeah. right now? You don't look anything like her, but you feel like her. These suspended reefs are hot today. People will be like, where are they fishing? Ooh, ooh, 20 ooh. bucks. Ain't happening, you start yeah. <laughs> I got one I plug into my cigarette lighter now. Give me Red Bull. That's what you come to beat a knock. Next bite. <laughs> The next bite would like to thank the Salmar Resort, located in Rapid River, Michigan. For more information on the Salmar Resort and their Bay Dinoc charter services, visit www.salmarresort.com.